What's this? I think it's an interesting tweet. That's what it is. I'm going to slide a bit out of the way so we can all see it. Hey, this uh, Appysack guy or Appysack. I have no idea how to pronounce your name. I'm sorry if you're watching this. You're probably not watching this. Anyway, but if you are, hey, hi, how are you doing? Anyway, um, thanks for, the, for, for all the leaks because this is a well-known and accurate, from what I've seen in the past, I've followed GPU leaks uh, quite a bit over the last year and I've seen a lot of accurate information from this source, so I'm gonna trust it. Anyway, um, okay. What is a 448EU? That's an Intel GPU and not one of the SKUs that we'd heard about before and not even their top end model. And what are we seeing here? We're seeing RX 6700 XT at 100%, RTX 3070 at 97%, and the 448EU at 1.8 gigahertz at 92%. We've also got something else going on down here. Uh, this one I'm a little less interested in just because it's one of the lower end models, but eh, it could be interesting depending on the price. Anyway, the 128 execution unit at 1.9 gigahertz at 100%, giving you a GTX 1650 at 88%. So what we're seeing here is some sort of performance numbers for a uh, two different models of Intel DG2 GPUs. So we're seeing that this 128 execution unit model uh, can beat a 1650, if the price is low enough, that could be interesting, depending on when this comes out. Now, I'm much more interested in this 448 execution unit model uh, being very, very close in performance to an RTX 3070 and not even too far behind the 6700 XT. And I'm interested in that not only just because, cool, they have a 3070 competitor, but also because this isn't their top end model. I think a lot of us have been wondering, is Intel really going to be able to compete at the high end? By the way, sorry my air conditioning came on a minute ago. I usually have that turned off for my videos. I'm not gonna re-record. Uh, you can deal with some fan noise. Anyway, <laughs> um, so the top end model that we've heard about is the 512 execution unit version. I've reported in a previous video, which I might remember to link up here and I might not, but you can look at my channel or whatever, that that has been reported by leakers such as Moore's Law is Dead, uh, that it won't quite be a 3080 in performance, but it will at least be to 3070 and be somewhere near a 3080 performance wise. Well, if it's true that the cut down version here with 448 execution units actually is just about at a 3070 level of performance, that's lending a lot more credence that the 512 execution unit model is gonna be up there, probably at least at a 3070 Ti, if, if not better. Again, I, I'd probably not expect it to actually be equal to or beat a 3080, but they'll be up there. Now this could be really interesting if their pricing is aggressive, which again, I have seen le uh, people like Moore's Law is Dead saying that they've heard some insider talk that the pricing is planned to be aggressive. The other thing that matters a lot for, for how interesting this is, is when does it actually come out? And especially in relation to, you know, how close are we to like the 40, uh, you know, the 4000 series from Nvidia? Because if you can compete with the 3070 at an aggressive price, that's really interesting unless the 3070 is already being replaced by the 4070 within a few months. See what I'm saying? Now, when would I expect any of this to be coming out? Well, this 448 execution unit model, I would actually expect to be coming out later than some of the uh, initial ones, and here's why. First of all, this is the first time I've heard of this model. Let me know if you heard about it before this, but I don't, I don't think there were rumors of this one. There've been other documents leaked that reported on a bunch of the other models, but not this one, which means this one might be a newer development idea, a cut down version of, you know, the 512 that they maybe weren't initially planning on doing, I'm not sure. Uh, but given that the earliest I would possibly expect the 512 execution unit model to launch would be the end of 2021, I mean the very end and maybe the beginning of 2022, then I'm expecting this to come in later, right? Like a lot of times like how Nvidia launched like the 3080 and then you trickle in the rest of your models uh, throughout the next year or so. Wouldn't surprise me if that happens, but again, they need to get in there before there's a 4000 series or they're gonna have to price these extremely aggressively. And you know, preferably both happens because man, I am so happy to see a third player joining the party in the GPU space. This can only be 
a really good thing for uh, for us GPU consumers out there. Now, if if you want a lineup of um, all of the leaked models that we're expecting from Intel, the folks over at Video Cards have done a nice job putting something like that together. I think I can. You know what? Let me just let me just disappear. Okay. So uh, I'll link this in the description to my video. So the folks over at Video Cards have been tracking these, and here's our 448 execution unit model um, that we're seeing leaked today, uh, which would give us an expected 3,584 shading units. And again, we saw in the leak today that the boost clock would probably be at about 1.8 based on, again, today's leak. Now, again, the top end model being this 512 execution units with 4,096 shading units, we're expecting 16 gigabyte uh, model available and um, a 256 bit bus. By the way, if you're wondering if these are supposed to support hardware accelerated ray tracing, I think the answer is yes, from what I have seen. So they, they should be offering a nice feature set. We've even seen rumors of a Intel version of a DLSS like um, AI, AI based super sampling. We'll see how all of that goes and whether any of it, you know, how much is available at launch. Anyway, um, so the other model we saw leaked today was this SKU with the 128. And again, we saw that this one um, is supposed the one that's supposed to be performing uh, better than a 1650, which, you know, is what it is. But that at least gives us some performance ideas, right? So if this is around a 3070, and this is beating a 1650, that's what we're getting out of our leak today. And now you can kind of imagine, okay, so this is like a 3070 Ti or maybe close to a 3080, right? And then you're kind of backing down from here. These will fill in the gaps between that, like, you know, beating a 1650 and, and you, got, you got your steps up here, right? Uh, so that's where our performance numbers are looking. I'm gonna pop back into the picture here for a second. All right, so, I'm, like I said, really excited here, but I also have some concerns. I'm worried about the driver support. I'm gonna fly around here out of the way, depending on what's, what's on the screen. Anyway, green screens are fun. All right, I'm worried about driver support. I mentioned this in my last Intel GPU thing, but again, um, mm, if, if they come out of here with aggressive pricing and they come out well enough ahead of the 4000 series cards, the other thing that can mess everything up is the driver support. But man, if they launch these things, like I said, in time and aggressively priced with supply available, there's never been a better time to steal market share in the GPU space if they can launch while supply is still so constrained. Because launch while the supply is constrained on the other cards, maybe somebody wants a 3070, but you're like, hey, you know what? Let me give Intel a shot. I like their CPUs you know, let's give their graphics card a shot. As long as the drivers aren't a disaster, let's give them a go. You know what I mean? At a good price with supply available? Hey, we'll see what happens. Although unfortunately from everything I've seen, we're not expecting, you know, Intel has their own fabrication capacity, but I don't think they're gonna be using that on this line of GPUs from what I've seen. So they'll be buying process space like everybody else, fighting over that. But hey, um, like I said, third player in the market, I'm happy. All right, I don't wanna keep rambling on. Let me know what all of you think about this in the comment section. I read every comment on my channel. I reply to as many as I can. Thank you, my subscribers, you're beautiful people. And extra thank you to my uh, members of my channel. I recently launched that join button. Feel free to click it if you wanna financially support what I do here. Help me buy supplies and like games to test and tech stuff to review and all of that. And thank you very much. I'm gonna stop talking. Have an excellent day.